So hi everyone and uh, welcome to this video on uh, trying to derive various properties of the money and utility uh, model. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to focus on the notion of deriving the real money demand function and using the consumption money optimality condition to derive a couple of things. Okay, so uh, we have here a problem. Okay, so we denote uh, this function uh, phi okay, as the real money demand function. So phi is the real money demand function, which we uh, intend to derive. Uh, and recall that uh, we know that the optimality condition for the consumption money framework is given by the derivative of the utility function with respect to uh, money demand and uh, divided by the, the marginal utility with respect to consumption being equal to uh, IT over one plus IT, right? So uh, this one is uh, the marginal utility of real money balance. That's the one on top. And this is the marginal utility of consumption. Okay, and suppose we have this utility function, a log utility function. So you have a uh, U uh, C T M T over P T is equal to L N C T plus L N uh, M T over P T. So A, okay, in A, what we need to do is we're gonna use the uh, the optimality condition to generate the real money demand function. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, so uh, to do this, okay, to do this, okay, we need the two marginal utilities, right? We need the marginal utility of the real money balance, which is U M T C T M T over P T. And uh, we also need U C T, right? C T M T over P T, right? So uh, to do this, it's pretty simple. Well, we know, okay, that uh, U C T, uh, C T M T over P T, well, if we derive this utility function with respect to CT, that's just one over CT, right? Then uh, next one is if we derive it now with respect to uh, MT, okay? So you MT, CT, MT over PT. Well, what we're gonna get is gonna be one over MT over PT times one. So that's one over MT over PT, right? So Nothing too difficult, right? Nothing too difficult. And uh, from there, okay, once we have all of these, we're just gonna divide it, the two things. So uh, this ratio that we have here, we can get it by, by dividing one over MT over PT divided by one over CT. Uh, that's just gonna be equal to, okay, uh, CT, uh, sorry, uh, that's just going to be equal to, um, um, if you do that, 1 over MT over PT times CT, right? So that's going to be PT, CT over MT. So that ratio there is a PT, CT over MT. And we know that it should be equal to IT over 1 plus IT under the optimality condition. Then we just need to isolate, need to isolate, okay? mt over pt. So to do that, multiply both sides by mt over pt, right? And uh, if we do that, okay, this the we're going to be left with ct equal to it over 1 plus it times mt over pt. Then we multiply both sides by 1 plus it over it, which yields us that mt over pt is equal to ct times one plus it over it, okay? And this is uh, what we refer to as the uh, real, okay, the real, okay, money demand function. So this is the real money demand function, okay? So nothing too difficult, okay? So this being the real money demand function, we can now do some things with that. So we're done with A. Okay, assume that IT is 0.125 and is fixed. Consumer consumption choices are uh, CT is equal to two when consumers have a price of 10 in mind. Now, according to the real money demand function, what is the demanded nominal money? Well, we can just simply use 
the real money demand function and compute for PT, right? Knowing now the level of uh, PT, CT, and IT, right? This should be a uh, pretty uh, straightforward, okay? A pretty straightforward uh, substitution, which is uh, no difficulty. So we just simply substitute uh, the things we have. So we have here uh, for B, CT equal to two, our IT is 0 0.125 and is fixed, right? And then uh, we have a PT equals 10. So we're going to get MT divided by PT, which is 10, is equal to CT, which is 2, times 1.125 divided by 0 0.125. So to isolate out MT, we multiply this by 10, right? Times 10. And if we do that, we're going to get that MT is equal to 180. So the uh, the demanded, okay, oops, the de uh, 180 represents uh, the demanded, the demanded nominal money, right? Pretty straightforward money. Okay. Okay, last uh, Suppose now, okay, our last problem, suppose now that the Fed sets the level of the money supply being equal to 270. Um, uh, it, it, the question is, is now asking, is this a positive or a, a negative monetary shock? And uh, uh, under that circumstance, what open market operation did the Fed do to be able to achieve such a policy? Well, this is simple enough, right? See? Well, we know money demand, uh, and now we're given with a money supply level equal to um, 270. Well, if money demand is 180, right, that's nominal money demand, uh, uh, it means that MTS must have been greater than MT, right? Because 270 is greater than 180. So it must have been a positive positive or an expansionary, a positive uh, monetary policy uh, shock, right? So it must have been this positive uh, monetary policy shock, okay? Give me a second. Okay. A positive uh, monetary policy shock. Policy shock, right? So uh, in order for the Fed to do this, okay, it needs to buy Okay, government bonds, bonds in the open market. Okay, and in doing so, that increases increases money supply. Okay, so that's that, right? So it's a very simple concept of uh, the money in utility model, and uh, we can see that the derivations are pretty straightforward. So uh, thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.